Last summer, three men and three women volunteered to spend four weeks searching their souls at an Islamic retreat in southern Spain. That's why it's so, valuable. so far, the experience has had a profound impact on most of the group. It's such an opportunity, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I feel quite greedy. I just want to grab everything I can from it. I'm learning to see the deeper significance of what's going on and to taste it. I have to taste it. And I think I'm beginning to do that. But it hasn't all been plain sailing. Well, you need to go and read it, Aisha, because that's totally not what I just read. Don't read it. Why not being so rude? Well, I'm in case this is you. I just was thinking, oh, God, can't we just accept the differences and stop criticising each other? Leading the retreat is Abdullah Trevathan, a university lecturer and a respected teacher within the Muslim community. I think coming on the retreat has been a unique opportunity for them all. But this last week is going to be really tough. I think if they want to get the most out of it, they need to lay aside their differences, focus in on what we're doing, and then I think the experience could be life-changing. Set in the quiet isolation of Andalusia, the retreat welcomes visitors of any faith and caters to Muslims of all persuasions. It focuses on the values of what they call classical Islam, the spiritual heart of the religion, with its emphasis on a personal relationship with God. To help his guests get the most from their experience, Abdullah has assembled a team of British Muslims who will mentor and help teach the daily classes of religious instruction. As they enter the final week, the six are about to face their biggest challenge yet, the holy month of Ramadan. It's the most sacred period in the Islamic calendar as it commemorates the handing down of the Quran from Allah to the Prophet Muhammad. It's also the fourth of the five obligations or pillars on which Islam is founded, a time when all Muslims must submit to their dependence on Allah. From dawn to sundown, there is no drinking, there's no eating, there's no uh, sexual intercourse. It's a complete if you like, negation of all the usual uh, bodily needs. This is a time for us, all of us on the retreat, irrespective of any differences of religion or not religion or whatever, this is a time for us really to lay all those things aside and to be uh, as one. It's also a month when we remember the, the, the hunger of the poor you'll find that emotionally you're a little more fragile. You'll find that your heart will be much more open and receptive. So this is a time really of great importance on the retreat. I'm, and a, I'm a bit nervous about it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be with you. We're going to be with you, yeah? You don't argue, you don't do lots it's of more than 20 time. years since ad salesman right. Azim yeah, observed yeah, Ramadan. He was raised a Muslim but rebelled against his father's strict adherence to the faith. Since coming to the retreat, Azim has rediscovered his Islamic roots. Sisters used to talk about Ramadan and I used to be sarcastic about it because I didn't, I didn't fast or anything like that. So one day says, are you fasting? I say, no thanks, I've got enough points on my license. I'm kind of uh, looking forward to it, to tell you the truth. Maybe this, this will be the, well, that was the final part of the challenge where it gets tough. For nearly three weeks, the group has been following a demanding timetable based on the traditional five daily prayers. It includes periods of silent contemplation, religious instruction, and manual labor around the estate. The intense schedule is having an impact on all the participants. One of the things that um brings it even more home in the... 28-year-old psychotherapist Pom Jenkins is finding answers to many of her long-standing questions about the divine. I had so many jokes before I came out, oh, God, you're going to come back with a hijab, and um, I don't think realistically I'm going to, in four weeks, uh, suddenly become a Muslim, but, you know, maybe, maybe I will. These are all patterns, and some of them are, some of them are good, some of them are bad. 
You know, if I want to make a change, it has to be, <gasps> I've got, you know... I've Whilst Pom has responded intuitively, agnostic science graduate Simon Yarrow has been unable to connect on anything but an intellectual level, to his increasing frustration. I'm really fed up and pissed off. I just feel this huge weight of expectation. Everybody keeps saying, oh, there's as many different ways to, to God as there are people. Well, yeah, just leave me alone a bit then. As well as the five universal daily prayers, there is a congregational form of worship known as dhikr, or remembrance of Allah, everyone is expected to attend. But some have rejected this, claiming that communal chanting is bidha, a deviation from Quranic rules. No, but seriously, why don't I just join the choir at my local church? No, 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 stick to this, mate. Stick to this. It's not... This is going to take you to heaven. <laughs> oh, not again. Leading the dissenters is Aisha Albi, a barrister who specialises in Islamic law. <laughs> I was trying to read my Quran, and there was all this chanting going on. The aspects of worship Aisha objects to derive from the Sufi tradition, a mystical approach to Islam that inspires Abdullah and the other British Muslims on the retreat. Despite trying to be as open-minded as possible, I think I'm finding quite a few of the concepts and the beliefs difficult and uncomfortable because they don't fit with, and I won't say my understanding of Islam, but very much an understanding of Islam that that goes across the rest of the Muslim world. How do you know that you're not just, just destroying the tree here? <laughs> you know what, Aisha? Yeah. I might swear at you. <laughs> you're so rude. <laughs> like, me? Oh, that's like saying I'm the only one... Even Aisha's main ally, Muslim convert Khadija, is becoming frustrated with her outlook. I sometimes feel that I can't have my own freedom of expression because I'm going to get jumped on. I don't think she does it intentionally. I think it's just the fact that... She believes in what she believes in, and she can't accept that anybody else has another point of view. And it's just like, oh, for goodness sake, like, leave me alone. Leave me alone to do my own thing. For over one billion Muslims around the world, Ramadan begins only when the rising crescent moon is sighted. Though a Muslim, businessman Madassa Ahmed admits he only ever went through the motions of praying. Now, for the first time, he's connecting with the spiritual side of his faith. As a Muslim, you're always well aware of the fact that Ramadan is meant to be the time when you really ought to feel as spiritually nourished as possible. My Ramadans over the past two or three years have not been like that. When you're fasting and you're working, you kind of miss out on the whole sort of essence of the whole thing. And over here, I hope to recapture the essence and through that, feel, feel better, feel more, more connected. Um, and I've got a very good feeling about this Ramadan. I've got a very good feeling about it. I mean, I think this is it's amazing that it's culminated in this. It's just surreal. The sighting of the new moon signals the start of Ramadan. It will continue for the rest of the retreat and three weeks beyond. Get out, you lazy tosser. You're not up. Pull your horizontal. Come on. The fast begins at sunrise, so an early breakfast is the last opportunity to eat or drink until the evening, after the sun has set. Not even water is permitted. Even I couldn't eat that at this time of the morning. Yeah, but you have to. And I could eat anything usually. Well, we, we have like mash. <laughs> well, as in mashed potato? Yep. If you get this thing in the red packet and you just add water in it. About two o'clock in the afternoon, suddenly the 
You know, the body really feels the lack of sugar. A few hours left to the end of the fast, and the spirits can begin to sink them. So there'll be less laughing and joking. Even during the fast of Ramadan, work must go on. Miss this, you know. I really, I'm going to miss this. It's going to be so boring jumping into my car, driving to work, with all that crap. Everybody, all that road rage. I mean, look at this. It's wicked. Don't you think? By late morning, the group is starting to get a taste of what's to come. Got up for breakfast and had a very decent breakfast that was focusing on the food and actually forgot about the liquid side, which is a fairly fundamental side. And it's now, you know, in direct sun, doing quite a lot of physical labour and we've got like a fluffy tongue already. I feel quite... This is fasting for you. You know I've gone too far when I drop down of dehydration. You know, I'm just noticing that the energy's flagging, and I understand perfectly the energy's flagging. The thing is not to set up in opposition to it, but not to settle simply, you know, just relaxing into exhaustion. And I think when you when you're fasting, you can get very lightheaded. If they lose it here. The danger is they'll lose it on the outside. With energy levels flagging and no revitalizing lunch to break up the day, a sweltering afternoon during Ramadan leaves plenty of time for inward reflection. It's been the first uh, Ramadan, the first fast in over 20 years, or 20, 20 some years. <laughs> this kind of environment that we're living in at the moment, and this is Islamic retreat, it is. If you want to do it, you can do it. If you don't want to do it, there's no pressure. Don't worry, we'll understand. So, which makes me want to do it. nice ritual to all gather in the mosque at the evening prayer and it was just really it was really touching actually it does give you a real sense of the Muslim community because I know everyone's doing it today and I knew everyone was breaking their fast you know in the evening and um, you know, that's that's quite special it makes you feel very unified Each week, Abdullah takes the group out into the wilderness for a period of silent meditation. The exercise is designed to focus attention onto the spiritual, and Abdullah hopes that during Ramadan it will take on added significance. The person who's hungry and tired, their heart is very soft and they're very open. You know how, you know, when you're a bit tired that you tend to stare? Oh, I like that. Really that's, that's sort of the kind of thing. The wide attention, which is being where you are. Yeah? The narrow attention is looking down, perhaps, at the ground, at a dung beetle, you know, wrestling with a, a big ball of dung. <laughs> yeah? And how amazing that is. Yeah? It so is. it's going from, from, the, you know, from the cosmos to the microcosm. Yeah. If you don't put into the struggle enough, you're not going to get anything out of it. By cutting away 
extra useless, even destructive baggage that we've created for ourselves.